most of the time when you install something on Arch Linux, it's going to be from what I collectively refer to as the Arch standard repos, the core extra and community repos. They're the Arch standard repos because they're the repos you can access without modifying anything in your Pac-Man config. Occasionally you also install stuff from the AUR, otherwise known as the Arch user repository, but this isn't exactly a package repository in the same sense as some of the others. But if you're a gamer, maybe you have multi-lib enabled so you can get access to 32-bit libraries which you need to actually get Steam working properly. All of these are separate package repositories, and even though the AUR does hold user-generated content, it is still one of the official repositories under the banner of Arch Linux. But there are also third-party repositories as well that anybody else out there can run. I might do a more general video on those in the future, but today we're focusing on one in particular, and that is the Chaotic AUR. Before I can explain what that is though, we need to step back a bit and talk a little bit about the AUR. So generally when you install something from the AUR, you're going to have to compile it. This is the big difference between the standard repos and something in the AUR. The standard repos distribute binaries, the AUR can distribute binaries with packages that are labeled dash bin, so say LF dash bin, Brave dash bin, Firefox dash bin, so on and so forth, but most of the AUR is something you have to compile yourself. And compiling code while providing performance benefits, if you actually tweak your compiler options and try to get the absolute most out of the application, it does have a drawback. And that drawback is downloading and compiling code is always gonna take longer than just downloading and installing a binary. So then, the Chaotic AUR is going to take certain packages from the regular AUR. Obviously, it can't do all of them because there's just simply way too much content in the regular AUR. And secondly, a lot of that content really isn't ever used. Like, it'll be sitting there for five years and nobody has downloaded it since then. So we can safely ignore that stuff, mainly take the really popular stuff, and also try to take a lot of really big packages, things that take a very, very long time to compile. Things like OBS Studio, Firefox ESR, Ungoogled Chromium, Brave. And rather than just shipping out the source code, instead of doing that, go and pre-compile the applications and then ship out a binary like any of the regular repos. Now, how often stuff gets compiled very much depends on the specific package. Things like, say, Firefox, for example, if you were to compile that every single hour, you would be literally doing nothing but compiling Firefox. So maybe you want to have that on like a daily or maybe a weekly cycle. So the Chaotic AUR has four cycles to work with, and three of them are going to be daily. So we have morning, afternoon, nightly, and then hourly. Hourly, obviously, is the one there that isn't going to be daily. Hourly is going to be reserved for the things that get updated very frequently, get downloaded very often, but can still very feasibly be compiled within an hour. So a lot of the really small packages are in this category because if it takes a couple of seconds to compile, it doesn't really matter if it gets recompiled over and over again. And things like OBS, which get updated very, very often, but even though it takes a while to compile, if you have a fast enough system, it's not that big of a deal. Unlike the regular AUR, you can't just go and add in new packages yourself, but you can go and ask the developers to actually go and add something new. The way you do that is by going over to their GitHub and then submitting a new issue. So they're not guaranteed to add the project you add into it, but it does put it onto their radar and makes them consider whether it actually is a good idea to actually add. Interacting with the Chaotic AUR is actually quite simple. It's not like we're going to need some new tool to actually do so. What we're going to be doing is making some slight modifications to Pac-Man so that Pac-Man actually knows the repo exists. So the first thing you need to do is go and import the key for the server. Once you've imported that key with the first command, the second command is going to go and sign that key with your own personal key. Basically what this does is let you have a trusted communication between your computer and the Chaotic AUR server. If you want to know more about GPG, there are dedicated videos on it. I'm not going to explain that today though. Now we also need access to the Chaotic AUR mirror list and key ring. And where are those stored? Well, they're stored on the Chaotic AUR. So we're not actually able to go and download it normally by just, you know, doing Pac-Man and then the name of those packages. So what we need to do instead is go and download them manually. And that's exactly what this command here is going to do. And once you've done all of that, you've done basically the baseline to make it so Pac-Man actually knows the repo exists. 
but there's one more thing we need to do to make it so we can actually interact with it. If we go into our slash Etsy slash pacman.conf, what we're going to need to do in here is basically add two new lines into our pacman conf. And what these are going to say basically is this is the chaotic AUR and this is where you can find the mirror list for it. This is exactly what needs to be done for adding in any other repos into Pac-Man. So in this case, it's going to be chaotic-aur and then include, make sure you spell that correctly and with a capital equals and make sure you have the path correct as well. Otherwise, it will not be able to find the mirror list. So pacman.d slash chaotic-mirror list. Now, I'm not sure whether this is actually required because it is listed under the recommendations section, but it says you must also have multi-lib enabled. So, I, being here, I don't know if it's actually required, but we're going to enable it anyway. Basically, that's what this line right here is. Multi-lib I think might be included inside of the default config, but it won't be enabled. So if it is included, basically just go and uncomment it. If it isn't included, basically just include what I've got right here. So multi-lib and then this path right here to your mirror list, which is basically the default mirror list. And then once you've done all that, there's some extra recommendations, things like installing PowerPill, which I wouldn't recommend doing anymore. The reason why they suggested it is so you can have parallel downloads, but parallel downloads are now natively supported inside of Pac-Man. I did a video on this, but if you didn't see that, basically just include parallel downloads and then the number of parallel downloads you want, and you'll be good to go. And now that you've done that, if we go and run a sudo pacman-syu, as you notice, one of the repos included right there was the chaotic AUR. So that means it's working perfectly fine. And you may have also noticed that some of the packages you've installed from the AUR are now actually included inside of Pac-Man. Things like, say, pycom-git. Uh, what else do we have here? I think that's the main one. Uh, also, Starship. This is also from the AUR. So anything inside the chaotic AUR you have downloaded is now going to be managed by Pac-Man. And I like that. I think that's really cool. But there's one question you might be asking, and that is, is the chaotic AUR actually safe to use? So the regular AUR by itself is already going to contain some risks. Yes, there are moderators, but they can't check everything in the AUR. So everything you download, you should be verifying and making sure the package you're actually building is actually safe to build and isn't going to just nuke your entire file system. So what then? The chaotic AUR is as safe as the regular AUR then? Well, not exactly. So with the regular AUR, you can go and verify the package you're downloading and making sure they're actually safe. In this case though, because someone else is building those packages, you have to trust that what they're sending you as a binary actually is what you expect to be sent. So, Yes, it is safe if you trust the developers and trust they're not going to be infecting your system with malware. But that does require you actually trusting people that you've never met before. I'm not going to say the Chaotic AUR isn't safe to use. There are hundreds of people who use it without any problems whatsoever. But if you are very, very worried about security, you shouldn't be using it. If you like convenience though, and you'd much rather download binary packages and accept that maybe at some point in the future there is some risk in doing so, then maybe it's a good idea to actually use. Anytime you add an extra repo to your system, there is some extra risk you are taking on. Whether you want to accept that risk and whether you trust the developers is entirely up to you. I am not here to tell you what to think, I'm just here to tell you that it exists. Let me know in the comment section down below, do you use the Chaotic AUR or are you going to consider using it now? Do you think it is a massive security risk and you compile everything yourself? Actually, better yet, maybe you don't even compile everything yourself. Maybe you write everything yourself on your system and you never touch anyone else's code. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. So that's going to be pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So, so a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter D. Steven Tease, through Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you like to support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave a pale, that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is available over on Odyssey. 
I think that's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>